Hmm. There's a four elite path over here. That's curious. Pretty suicidal, though. No fires at all. Just four elites. That seems crazy to me. Maybe if we had an apotheosis. But even then, I'm not sure. I'd want to at least upgrade apotheosis. Slingshot, thanks for the eight months of support. Have I ever taken damage on a floor with Lament activated? I have never had this happen, but it is possible. I saw a post on Reddit where it happened to somebody. Um, the easiest theory craft, let's say you take Lament on Ironclad. You face the two slimes, the small gray slime and the medium green slime. The small gray one attacks for six, the medium green one attacks for 12, and you draw a Sender's Bane plus all four defends. Exactly this hand. In that situation, and pretty much only that situation, would you then be forced to take damage? You could block three times, but you'd still take three damage. Otherwise, it's pretty tough. And a dad joke for the crowd. Why is Niao a whale? Because the spire is without porpoise. Hodor the door says, have I tried across the obelisk? I have. Yeah, we tried that out uh, as one of our community voted games one month. And it was pretty cool to look at. Uh, I think I think the main draw of that game would be the the multiplayer that you can have a, a cooperative deck builder slash roguelite experience. Uh, as a single player game, I found it needlessly cluttered with uh, stuff like stacking status effects on enemies and keywords. I could definitely see the multiplayer feeling a bit slow with four people. Sometimes it would it would get really overwhelming uh, mechanically, right? Like if if there's status effect and keyword stacking going on with one player's deck, then add four players. It can definitely turn into chaos, I'm sure. How do I value early silent hard pool fights? Chisigwe says, I feel like I often try to take four or five hallway fights in a row and take a ton of damage in a, a big slime fight and it loses you the run. The way I like to think of it is that, especially as silent, um, you're gonna take basically the same amount of damage total no matter how many combats you take. So if you take four or five combats in a row, you'll take a whole bunch of damage as you note, but you should be able to use the potions and card rewards from those early damaging fights to win all the rest of the fights without taking too much damage. So often in a situation like that, I find that I, I take 20 or 30 damage in the first couple of fights, and then I start perfecting combat after combat after combat because I picked up like a leg sweep or a, a, a backstab, or I've gotten terror plus blade dances down, and, and it's started, starting to really pay off uh, with so many cards added. So I guess the advice is tr try, to, try to build front load as you add cards, especially in Act 1, such that... Um, with more successive combats, you start to win them more decisively. But yes, if if you if you really low roll the first couple, it can go quite badly. You know, if you, if you roll into four gremlins on floor four and you didn't get a potion yet and you didn't find a damage card, um, you can take 50 damage or even outright die instantly to that, and that's no fun. But that's really not that common. Am I a fan of double backstab? Yes, I think it's pretty good. As long as you didn't swap your starter relic away. Is that what I'm going to do here? So we're either going crazy on elites or we're getting basically none. Those are the only two options, apparently. I think all of these starting options are good in their own right. I did want to try more boss swap clad. Let's do a boss swap. Oh, -ho! how's that for a start? We are a clad with a Sneko eye. And we are going to bonk the Spire. Most thoroughly. Let's start here. I have the most options from here. Ah, uh, yes. The perfect turn one. <laughs> Hello? Alright, well, Sneko do be like that sometimes. It's just how it is. One must accept that taking the Sneko Eye may result in uh, loss of life and limb really quickly if your card costs don't align with what you need. 
but I say that the Snekawai averages all things out in time. And so, as long as you believe in Sneko and pay the Sneko tax willingly, all will balance out in the end. Just have to trust that it'll be worth it. And immediately I see a very good card here, Perfected Strike, with a Sneko Eye Start. It is actually a spicy as heck card. Deals good damage up front for a base of two costs. We don't care what cards cost, so it's just a big attack. And if we find more of them, they all get better. It's also a pretty good first upgrade. You know, I might actually go for four elites here. Hold on. Let's go this way. This nerd drops anything half decent. We're going four elites. Uh, I might be able to full block here. We have perfected strike coming up. Yeah, we can just full block. Cool. Oh yeah, we're definitely going four elites here. Ho ho. Carnage and a fairy in a bottle. Let's blap some stuff. Just take the big cards. All the big cards. Here we go. Upgrade a card. Oh my goodness. Do we upgrade Carnage or the Perfected Strike? Uh, Carnage gets plus eight going from 20 to 28. Perfected Strike gets one more per strike. Currently six. But also doesn't exhaust if it's three cost, so we choose not to play it. Maybe upgrade Perfected Strike here. Oh, we're back. Very brief interruption there. Welcome back, one and all. Give it a refresh if you haven't. Not that you can hear me if you didn't. See, so yeah, I think I think Bash is actually a, a no kappa here. Bash is a genuinely good upgrade choice at this shrine, allowing us more consistent vulnerable against Gremlin Knob and Lagavulin. Can wake up Lagavulin, but I'm not actually that concerned. We have to wake up early with Carnage anyway. You know what? Let's do it. Let's upgrade Bash. Bash him. Foil him, bash him, put him in a stew. Excuse you, Mr. Worm. And block it over here. An elixir. We can exhaust any number of cards in our hand. That's actually really useful in the Lagavulin fight. Maybe in Gremlin Ob too, as we can avoid redrawing defense. And an, another perfected strike. Here we go. Heavy Blade and Blood for Blood are perfectly fine with Snekawai, but having one piece strike, I'm definitely going to take another one. Hundo percent. Are you dead, sir? Not quite. All right, we'll take six to the looter. That's fine. Strike deck, go. Looks like you've struck out. I want to clash a Brutality or an Iron Wave? I don't think so. Extra draw from Brutality is questionable with Snekawai, and so is the cost, as we'll have to spend energy on it. If only it was Clash Strike. No, Iron Wave is not a good enough block card for us. I'll take Shrug it off. Would strongly prefer something like Flame Barrier or Power Through as a block card. Okay, so here's an opportunity to use the Elixir. We can use the Elixir to exhaust, defend, defend, defend here. Next turn we draw Bash, Perfected Strike. Actually, how much damage do we have? I even need to talk about this. If I can Bash, Perfected Strike next turn, which is not guaranteed, um, how much damage is that? We have seven strikes now, so it's 20 base damage. So that would actually just kill if I can play them both. Let's not even use this potion. We're relatively likely to just kill right now, which we do. 
but we find a new potion anyway. We also find a molten egg, which is insane here, because all perfected strikes will now say plus, like this one. Easy game. Look at that. The perfect deck is assembling. We are so good for three more elites here. We're going to chop them in two. In fact, the more card rewards, the better. I want more perfect strikes. Also, what the heck is this? This is terrifying. Help. Please send help. I shall only do 15. Looks like we take 10 here. Kill the sneaky gremlin, kill the fat gremlin. And then leave the two angry gremlins, which is more or less fine. It's like getting jumped. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough, that's for sure. But yeah, these costs are okay. At least we can kill two of them. I didn't see a way to use the potion to get three or more kills. There's no way to split the damage quite, quite well enough. These nerds just get chopped in two. Chop! Chop. And they're gone. Carnage plus, or a headbutt plus, or an armament, which can upgrade cards in hand. Carnage plus seems like a worse perfected strike, oddly enough. I think I might skip these, actually. These are even as good as Carnage is here. These cards are not quite good enough for the deck as it stands. So let's just skip. We get several more card rewards this act. Looking forward to our Immolate Plus later on. Hmm. I'm gonna try to wake up with Bash. That was a tempting hand, though. Yeah, this is a bit better. We can do Bash, Carnage, Strike, Strike. Works for me. Next turn we can evaluate Flex Potion or see if we just have a kill. If we can play Double Perfected Strike, that alone should be enough. And we we can totally play Double Perfected Strike. Erect, sir. The damage output is now absurd. We have a Blood Vial. Oh, man. Even though we have Perfected Strikes, I would now like to be offered Bites. Clash Plus. Even with Snekoi, this is not the world's worst rage. I don't think I take it, but this is not terrible. Right now, we don't need block, is the, the simple truth of it. We can just have a deck that's all perfected strikes, and we go to Act 3 with that. We just go straight to Act 3. Give me 8 more damage. I just want to hit so hard that... The enemies are dead on turn one, usually. It's a pretty good flex potion. I want to consider that. All right, 50% for a new potion. You know what? I'm going to do it. Let's squish him. Good fight. Sure is easy when your strikes deal 20 damage. Fire breathing can do stuff with Sneko Eye. More card draw equals more statuses and curse cards drawn. Burning Pact is potentially okay here, although often we'd use it to exhaust strikes, which make the perfected strikes weaker. I guess I'm okay with that still. Or again, we can skip. I think it's nice to have this for later. The event is secretly a fight and a good fight at that. We can pick up a relic here that reduces the additional damage we take when we're vulnerable. And also heal for two, block for 10 on turn one, and chop these nerds into pieces, as well as get a card reward.
25 bucks. Odd Mushroom Skill Potion. Uppercut Plus. Uppercut Plus looks pretty good. If we wanted Block, here's Power Through. But I'm taking the Uppercut. Weak is also Block. Five Nerds. No nerds. Nerds destroyed. Okay, we could maybe think about a true grit so that we have a block guard. He wants some defense. Give me that. It's not the best block card, but it's the first block card, and that seems important. This is not good enough to start. Better? Much better. Oh my, what an explosion in chat here. Jacob O, you don't need to block if you kill them turn one. That's right. Thanks for the bits. The Whittle Wolfie with the prime sub in the nine months. Whittle Wolfie believes. And Gary Spaceman with five very generous gifted subs. Welcome. The Koozie Sub Club, everybody. Aya. You've struck out once again. Second lag, even easier than the first one. Now our block cards are blockier. And Exhume Disarm is kind of a thing. You could take Clothesline here, then have Bash Plus, Uppercut Plus, Clothesline Plus is very consistent uh, source of all three debuffs, but seems better to me to prepare for the late game with something like Disarm here. Being able to reduce the strength off of an enemy boss, particularly the Awakened One, the Time Eater, um, Champ is pretty good to Disarm too. So strong, I haven't even mentioned the Act Boss matchup. Oh yeah, Slime Boss is going to get absolutely chopped in half by the Perfected Strikes here. It's going to be very one-sided for poor old Slime Boss. Definitely our easiest matchup with a heavy offense uh, set of cards like this. Which arm? Disarm. <laughs> and we're leaving that Smoke Bomb on the ground, of course. Yeah. Now you show up. Hmm. It is already plus one. We can immediately make it to plus two. <laughs> can I preview the upgrade on this? Yeah, Searing Blow plus two. Each upgrade on Searing Blow is more powerful than the last. With Searing Blow, you want to run a really small deck of cards. We do have a Burning Pact and True Grit to get back to the Searing Blow. Hmm. I think it's probably better for us to just add more Perfected Strikes than it is to try to take a Searing Blow here. But um, it's not the worst option. Like you, I think you could make this work pretty reasonably. That said, if we... Walk into Act 2 as we are. What we're going to want to do is kill as many elites as possible. And Searing Blow will want us to go to as many rest sites as possible. Those two goals may not be aligned. So I say we skip. As much as I do kind of like that Searing Blow. And as much as I think you, as you could use that Searing Blow to do quite a lot of damage. There were some options for what to upgrade there, by the way. It wasn't always Perfected Strike, but I'm quite happy. Uh, 9 goes to 78. Look at that. Turn 1, almost split. Turn 2. Dead. Well, hence why I didn't mention the boss yet. Now we can add a Bludgeon Plus or a Feed Plus. I guess feed is a block card. Hmm. Having the free upgrade on it is pretty stellar. How are we going to feed if everything is already dead? Is a good question. 
This this feed might be a little hard to land. The bludgeon is freaking hilarious too. But even if we only land feed in half of the opportunities, it's still really, 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 really good. I'm gonna take the feed. And uh, you know what? Who cares what the enemies are doing? Because what I'm doing is hitting them in the head. I guess we could also take Philo Stone and just disarm enemies too. That lets me know who to target. Okay, no, no, we'll do Philo Stone. We'll do Philo Stone. Energy is definitely what you want here with the Sneko Eye, though. Four energy Sneko, very consistent output. It's going to let us do some hot nonsense. What do I do at a shop here? Remove Carnage? <laughs> Amazing. I do want some events here. I'm really hoping we find Bites. Even though they would make the Perfected Strikes terrible, I would super take them. And I see that we can fight several Elite. That said, card rewards are how we get more Perfected Strikes, too. This game is complicated. Hmm. It's a great example of where feed might not work out here. We could skill potion in this situation, see if it can let us secure a kill somehow. Something like double tap or shockwave. Warcry could put the feed on top. Or we can just try to get back to feed here. Yeah, we want Bites because we have both Blood Vial and Molten Egg, so what happens is, for no max health, we turn all of our strikes into Bite Plus. That's why we want uh, Vampires. And then with Feed, having a way to heal back up to full is quite valuable. But yeah, the P-Strike will be sad. I am in a skill pot here. Just an armament, huh? Fair enough. That means I don't have to play the True Grid, though. Can't uppercut this guy. That works out okay. It's gonna flee next turn, so we have to draw back to the feed now, as quickly as we can. Which may not actually happen. Alas, we missed it. Bummer. That's okay. We at least get all of our money, and probably nothing here. Transform two cards, or gain three strength on turn one. I'm down for a transform two here. Quite happily so. Do I get rid of strikes? Not yet. Let's lose the carnage. And one defend. Or maybe even two defends. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, Carnage one defend is for now. We might have to commit to losing the strike soon, which I'm fine with. But let's start with Carnage defend. Any attacks we get will be upgraded. Like this Whirlwind. We got Whirlwind plus an Offering, which is pretty good. That's pretty good. And I might be going to this Burning Elite. I think I will. Definitely a good upgrade for the cards. Oh, -ho. like an Akabeko the Whirlwind. Hold on, math time. So if I Whirlwind for four, we do sixteen by four, sixty-four Nintendo sixty-four plus uppercut would then deal thirteen plus speed would then deal eighteen with vulnerable. That's ninety-five. That does kill. Nintendo 64. Nintendo 50. Doesn't 
didn't count the block. Okay, Shrug is still good enough to take here. This block's nine. You could argue Iron Wave is almost as good as Shrug, but I would disagree. Give me more upgraded attacks to add to the deck. Perfected Strike. Get in here. And now the shop. Pommel Strike wasn't too bad. Searing Blow is back. Twin Strike is here. Dual Wield with Sneko Eye is a thing. I'm going to buy this. The time to remove strikes. Just one. We can still take the bites if we want to. I'm going to remove one. Gigantor with the seven months of support. I also don't mind the Abacus here. When we shuffle the draw pile, gain six block. It's pretty good. I'm not going to take a twin strike. I think just perfected strikes and pommel strikes is probably fine. Whittle Wolfie, thank you for five more gifted subs. Welcome, welcome, one and all. To the Cozy Sub Club. Yeah, I'm going to take the Abacus here. Remember, you can always count on the Abacus. That's a spooky uh, elite, actually. Although we can just chop everybody in half here, as usual. I like it. I can play the offering first. I guess I will. Get a dual wield. This is a slight improvement. Do wield the one cost perfected strike plus. Yes. Spin to win. Like I said, you can always count on the abacus. Okay, we might have too much damage here. Looks like we can kill Gremlin Leader, but I want to feed on Gremlin Leader. Gremlin Leader. Let's see, so this would do 48 to Gremlin Leader. Plus 49. Plus 49 would kill. So maybe we defend. Take a little bit. How about this? Perfect. Now feed will just outright kill. Excellent fight. Get a mob bank, giving us money every floor until we spend some at a shop. Excellent that we just left the shop. Juggernaut. Whenever you gain block, deal damage to a random enemy. Interesting. Juggernaut's kind of cool. I'm just going to grab that. All cards fit in a Sneko deck. You don't actually gain block that often yet, but that could change. The mirror matchup. Your face, sir. is now part of my face. Delicious. Okay, now we take a power through. Now we take a power through. I want some block. And I want some more elites. Let's go this way for more combats. Less events? I think I want the events. Block. Two thirds of a boat, assemble. Definitely like block on turn three. This helps against heart, which is always a fight you're looking to improve your matchup against. As well as various bosses, say a collector too. Let's go disarm peace strike here. No attacks for you.
but yes block for me. Get in there, Abacus. Okay, we can block for another 22, 28, incoming 30. I only have to take two damage to roll for the feed here, so I will do that. Could have even full block with the Essence of Steel. That said, I don't see feed here. This Burning Pack wants to help out. Or Offering wants to help out. Pay six, maybe gain... Four, I'm gonna do it. Got it. We got it. I'm gonna do a wheel defeat here. Excellent. Notably, cannot kill with feet on this turn unless I play Offering. So I guess we better play Offering. Can I eat the sphere? This does 30. We have to do 30 more. No, I can't do 30 more. So we have to eat this one. be back for you. Maybe now we use the Essence of Steel. I think so. I'm pretty likely to get another potion here. Better than nothing out of the potion. Aha! Feel no pain. Excellent. To go with our juggernaut. Here we go. Deck becoming online. Ooh, sorry about your faces, gents. That feels bad for you guys. My only regret is that if I play Whirlwind here, I don't get defeat. We could potentially feed three times. Which is kind of cool, although I'm not counting on doing that, for sure. Or we can just spin to win. Pretty satisfying. If only I had a card I could spend a little bit of energy on and just, like, kill the front and the back. Doesn't the middle one survive? Not with Akabeko, he don't. No, as you can see, he he'd very dead. Worth it. And more potions. See, we're at full health. Fine. Just too satisfying. One more of that. Relic Burke Curse. I'll say no. Feels bad. I'm hoping for Thwack there, but we're still very good for the rest of this run, I think. And a dad joke for the collect for the crowd, courtesy of Nimble Plunderer. Let's see if I can come come up with a pirate themed dad joke. That's what my my brain's going towards.
I'll give an oldie but a goodie, one of my favorite pirate-themed ones, actually. What did the pirate say on his 80th birthday? I matey. Fiona Gray, thanks for the 40 months of support. And no refunds. Are you serious with that pun? I am. What's a pirate's favorite pattern? Argyle. I like that one. That's a good one. Has my tolerance for curses changed? Yes, Flirt Freak. I am realizing more situations where I could take curses and get away with them. This is actually a half-decent situation for something like that. To get away with curses. I almost want a dual-wheeled juggernaut, but it's too expensive here. Dual-wheeled whirlwind is curious. How am I winning the collector fight? With brute force is the short answer. I think we just play the one juggernaut, actually. Yeah, that feels right. That feels right. Then we definitely need to get Feel No Pain in play, too. Heal those stinky minions. Got a lot of health to work with, but not an infinite amount. We have to be somewhat dis discerning about how we go about things here. I think that would be free. Kill you. Yeah, plus seven damage per block instance is going to be quite a lot over the course of this fight. that weakness up. Feels very important. I'm chip away at you. Dual wield for free. With a perfected strike that's free in the hand is exactly what you want to see here making more perfected strikes that we can play immediately and they're all at a discount. Perfect. I think I'll kill with whirlwinds. Let's put all of these into collector itself. Looks pretty good. Excuse me. Even worse. Terrible. Uppercut feed is not a kill, it's not. One up swift potion then. This is definitely not the situation we wanted here. Yeah, Sneko, please. Okay, that's a bit better. Can I at least get a kill here? We can do six damage. Plus 27 damage. Plus 14. That's 47. It is not a kill. Hmm. Curious. Alright, well, we can survive this turn, I suppose. Power through through grit. Don't think we get more damage out of dual wielding the strike than we do from playing uppercut. Uh, also, one of the strikes gets discarded, unfortunately. So we have a full hand here. And there's actually not a card we can play before the dual wield that doesn't result in a penalty. So I'm going to go with uh, power through true grid. Just play this strike here. Get up, Juggernaut. Take a bunch of damage. We should have a kill this turn with the Perfected Strike, and if we're really lucky, we can draw back into feed here. I think I'll just take the kill now, thanks. 
Be fine. Let's leave with our life intact and pick up maybe a Reaper Plus or maybe a second Juggernaut. Hmm. Don't have any strength for Reaper, although we do have Akabeko, which can make it very powerful. That alone is probably good enough reason to take it. And dual wield? Yeah, I'll take it here. And that means we can take Coffee Dripper to go to 5 energy with eff effectively no penalty, because we have ways to heal. We have Meal Ticket, we have Blood Vial, we have Reaper, and we have uh, Fury in a Bottle. So we become a 5 energy Sneko deck, which is going to use power scaling in the late game here. And I like it. Blade Maku, thanks for the Prime sub in the 18 months. Hello, hello. Elites up the far side with an early shop. How can I say no to this path? Pro tip, I can't. That's what I want to do. Is Berserk a bad card? It definitely can be. It definitely can be. Berserk's main problem is that it provides no benefit on the turn you play it, while also having a downside, which can make it very unwieldy. Unwieldy? Very tough to use properly. We took a Berserk uh, very recently with our um, Orange Pellets run. Oh, you guys are going to give me a hard time, huh? Hmm. I see how it is. Good thing I've got a Reaper that can heal me to full. Jerks. Well, maybe not full, but I'll take um, a lot. A lot is a good start. Seems good. And you're next, bud. Talk. Hey, where's my feet? Hmm, bad. Okay, that's decent. find a shockwave yet. I don't think I want a clothesline, though. We're rich. Small bank has earned us enough that uh, second juggernaut does look pretty good, actually. I also really like clockwork souvenir to prevent vulnerable in the heart fight, as well as block a couple other debuffs, like uh, time meters drawdown. Pennib Akabeka Reaper can be a thing. Pennib is pretty strong here. We should definitely take Pennib. We'll take Pennib and Souvenir, and we can still afford the Juggernaut, or we can do a card remove, which does seem better. Does seem better. Cool, I feel really great with these two relics. And a bit of money left over. Never did find any strength. 
We don't need any at this point. 94 gold for the Red Mask, making enemies weak on turn one, stripping layers of artifact off of other enemies. The artifact removal is pretty good for Spear and Shield. Sure. Sure. I can immediately take 2.75 with a curse. Going into four elites, I don't want a curse, so I won't be doing that. Some really good upgrades in here. I'm actually going to upgrade the Feel No Pain, because this is something we might be duplicating or dual wielding. But there's some other pretty good options in there, too. fight nemesis second win to go with our feel no pain get rid of all the non-attack cards in our hand and turn them into a ton of block hey sellouts thanks for the prime sub in the nine months there is strength here via spot weakness but because of the feel no pain juggernaut interaction i think this is by far the stronger card over spot weakness it's a good spot weakness but it's it's less than half as good as this second wind is Want to communicate that. Not even close. I wish I could pick that. Hmm. Mediocre. Play the defense first, actually. That's still mediocre. Bummer. Bash here, peace strike here, I guess. Thank goodness for the whirlwind. Hopefully want a whirlwind for three. That's pretty much mandatory. So we can do power through defend whirlwind. No juggernauts. Reaper does nothing, because we're already at full health. Let's clear the air. Between you and I, Repto. Five plus eighteen. Oh, that's so close. Hmm. Maybe I play offering. Let's. Hmm. Shrug. He will be back. Excellent. My hit points. Now let's play this. All right, feed next turn. Come on. Good. Even more max health. We get 122 now with Strawberry. Limit break, not today. No strength still. I feel like our damage is good enough for the late game, at least with the Juggernaut it should be. Especially if we can dual wield the Juggernaut or otherwise acquire another copy. Which we have passed on a couple of times. Transient's a test between scaling and front load. I'm not sure how we're going to perform here. We'll do our best. One thing's for sure. We're probably not going to feed on this thing.
Nice. Boom. Not rag five five five. Thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. Why do I so often play empty whirlwind? Yes, because it increases the number on both the ink bottle and the pen nib by one. So that's the primary motivation behind playing that. Get chopped, sir. No, thank you. Yeah, anytime you get transient below half health, that's usually a good sign that you're you're set up damage wise for the hard fight. Giant head is also a good test in a similar vein. Oh, we do get dual wield, and I can play two of the juggernauts. Okay, I'll do it. You're going to duplicate Juggernaut. Play Juggernaut, Juggernaut. So here we play Empty Whirlwind, that way Pen Nib is on nine for the next attack. This must be played. Next turn is not going to matter. No. So let's get the longer bowl. Do Reaper, P Strike, P Strike. Decent damage. But now we're facing down the angry giant head. And it is time for Retribution. Of the swords. But also, second win with Juggernaut can deal a lot of damage. Casual 140 damage from second wins. No feed there, but that's fine. Sentinel, if this card is exhausted, gain a bunch of energy. I like it. I like it. Yet another target for second wind. Darkstone Puriap won't do much for us, but not every relic can be helpful. Here's that Akabiko Reaper. Hot nonsense that we can perform, although being at full health, it is entirely unnecessary. Let's prefer to instead kill one of them. At least come close. I don't really like next turn. Well, I guess that could have been worse. We even get zero cost feed with Pennib. Tricky, tricky. So currently, Whirlwind will do 40 damage. And then we have Pennib after. That won't allow us to kill with feed. Is there any other line we can take? What if I perfected strike, then whirlwind with pen nib for two? That would be 32 damage to all. So we deal 27 plus 32 is 59 damage. You're left at 12. You're barely alive. Then we can uppercut and feed. That should work. If we uppercut, then Whirlwind, we'll do too much area damage, right? The Whirlwind kills them all instantly with the Pen Nib. And so we can't land the feed. We want to land the feed, so we have to play Perfected Strike. Then Whirlwind with Pen Nib. Oh wait, that still doesn't kill. Wait a minute. I definitely miscounted that. Hmm. Alright, I'll be back.
definitely miscounted that somewhere. Not quite sure what happened. But between looking at chat and deciding what I was going to do, I did not correctly add that up. <laughs> My bad. Let's try that again. So, kill them, but don't kill them all, once again, is the goal here. Probably we strike one, then whirlwind for... Still for 32. We have to spend two energy here. Yeah, I think I added perfected strike damage to both of them, somehow. I think you're right about that. So if I defend whirlwind, that's not good enough. We'll strike you. Oh, it's burning packed. How many rounds must we go through? I'm gonna find out. Hmm. Spooky. land the feed, all is well. Totally worth it. We get a turn one kill on the nemesis again? Probably not, although we can multi-wield perfected stride pretty effectively here. Might as well. Yeah. Oh, it destroyed, sir. What a turn, what a turn. One feed, please. Excellent. Get a potion belt so we can hold on to this fire potion. I'll take another shrug it off. More skills, more better, in my opinion. More block cards, also more better. When do we get the Dark Embrace? Well, we're kind of hoping the final shop might have it. Otherwise, it uh, won't be happening here. Although I think with our base draw from Sneka, we're probably just fine. Perfect. Ooh, tempting, but we should put the powers down. Ooh, that ain't it. That's not good. That's not what we want to see here. That's a bit better. Let's play this for damage. Pilo Stone tapping us for two. Would have been a perfect block otherwise. So it goes. Uh, Pinch of Disarm, then Uppercut, then Pen Nib Perfected Strike with Vulnerable on Donu here. Let's do that. 81 damage, Perfected Strike. Burning Pact? Now lose the basic defense. Abacus. I'm going to delete Sentinel. Play this. No, we should keep the bone going. Go in for one. 
again tapped for exactly two from Philostone. Curious. Uh-oh. Hmm. It's a crap turn. Get to finish Donu quickly here. Camp Lisbury, yeah, help. <laughs> I'd like to save that for later if possible, but if the draws are sufficiently bad, we might have to. Again getting tapped for two. Finish off Dunu here. Again, tap for two. I think that was four. You're gone. Okay. Him. That is the question. I think so. Yes. All right, 83 health into the next fight ought to be plenty. After Act 4, we'll have the post act heal and the meal ticket as potential healing. Not too read here. We've got Whirlwind with Akabaka turn one if we want to get rid of these stupid birds right away. Seems reasonable. Let's weaken them. Maybe I can Reaper, maybe I can feed. Don't need to play the Juggernaut in this fight. Although we may need to get rid of power throughs. want to dual wield anything in this deck is an important question I can ask myself here. Well, I'm not going to lose the disarm, so yes, let's just keep it for now. Probably should have been perfect and strike first there. problem. Hands like this. And... Alright, I'll use the Gamblers right here. This is bad enough. Keep the dual wield. Discard every other card. Given that we can buy some new potions, I'm willing to spend a bit here. This is unacceptable. Take this arm. Lock normally. of a strike. Right now I just want less attacks, period, I think. So that we have consistent block. Do you think playing that Juggernaut might make our life a lot easier? Doesn't have to, though. We're doing plenty of damage without it. A 
Okay, lose the dual wield. Less cards, not more. Doing less regular strikes. So again, playing these cards seemingly for no purpose, just to increase the number on the relics here. So that we get back to a increased value effect more quickly. Alright, there we go. Now we can Juggernaut. Juggernaut, Shrug, Second Wind. Bash, Uppercut, P-Strike. To your face. Shame we had to use our uh, potions. But I think this fight has gone pretty well overall. Okay, we're through the Awaken 1 fight. I probably should have set up Pen Nib a little bit more aggressively there, so that we could have had Pen Nib Akabeko going into the Burning Elites. However, I think simply having full health and buying back up to a full belt of potions will probably be enough. Zorak, thanks for the Prime sub and the 10 months of support. Make our damage better. Again, we're exactly healing to full here, thanks to Meal Ticket. Crawford Brimstone. Cute. There's the second Juggernaut that I kept saying I wanted. We can buy a new Gambler's Brew. I don't need an Ancient Potion because we have the Clockwork Souvenir, but I really like Juggernaut Gambler's Brew. Maybe instead of Juggernaut, you could argue for Bronze Scales, giving us Thorns to hit the heart back. I'm actually not sure which of those is more damage. I'm going to assume it's Juggernaut. Brimstone is cute, but uh, definitely not the thing to take with this deck. We have very few strength scaling cards. What happens if you play zero cost energy whirlwind with Akabeko active? You lose the Akabeko effect. Is what happens. You get nothing. Good day, sir. Not pen nib this P strike. Yeah, this is where the pen nib would have been a nice thing to have. Although I actually didn't want it on nine, I probably wanted it on seven or eight here. Five block this turn, or four block, and more block next turn. Yeah. I'm just gonna play the feed. I want pen nib set up here. Ooh. That's probably fine. Ow. Put my face, though. So, I can play Whirlwind. Whirlwind will deal 16 damage times 5, which actually outright kills the spear. Seems like a good move. If we play the Reaper, we can't kill it. So, yeah, let's just Whirlwind. Take 4 from the burns. Perfect block. Definitely don't need offering here. Prefer not to lose any more hit points. We'll chop at thee. We actually have a kill right now. I'm going to do a small attack next turn, I believe. 
might be able to feed on it or gain a bit of health with Reaper. I think in practice we're probably okay here. But probably is not definitely. We should take the advantages we can get where we can get them. All right. We'll try to keep this going. Let's see how badly I regret that. Actually, did already play the feed now that I think about it. This is great, though. Some extra health. We get a gambling chip to go with our bag of preparation. Do we have a bag of prep? No, to go with our Sneko Eye. And what's that? A corruption at the last minute? Get in here. All right. Corruption makes this way easier. As uh, so we can make all of our skills exhaust, which gives them block, which deals a lot of damage with Juggernaut. And we have even more damage with Liquid Bronze, so it should be very easy to kill the heart here. We have way more damage than we need. We have way more block than we need. And I like it. Use that uppercut, actually, just in case. Um, discard the true grid. Okay, getting Feel No Pain down is excellent. I'm happy with Feel No Pain Juggernaut. Extend the weekend by two turns. Might as well drink this now. Might as well use this now, too. Seems fine to me. The heart is weak, and we're not vulnerable, so the incoming damage is very small. Keep Burning Pact around. Let's delete this. Now we Corruption. Then Disarm. Draw more cards. Okay, not the best. Dual Wielding Reaper seems weak. I guess Dual Wielding Perfected Strike is where it's at. Or we Gamble now, because I want to get Dual Wield Juggernaut. Let's do that. There we go. Okay. That's what I wanted to see. Now we do 26 damage every time we block. Which is a lot. Kill next turn. Sounds good to me. Abacus deals 26 damage. Second wind deals a bunch. Perfected strike, get in here. Strike, get in here. And feed for the kill. With Juggernaut's help. GG! GG! If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next, and don't forget to follow on Twitch to watch the content live. Click the link in the description below.